you remember when the disciples were, were sleeping uh, just after the Last Supper and before the cross? Jesus said, are you sleeping? Wake up. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, Peter said. He wants to devour you. He's our adversary. He's opposed to us, and he wants to devour us. So we need to be aware of spiritual overconfidence. And so basically, I start giving you Jesus' warnings in the gospel. And what he does is he says to them that I want you to always be ready. You don't know in what hour the Son of Man is coming. You were called to do one thing. Remember, we're supposed to be followers of Christ and we're supposed to make disciples, what we are and what we do. Remember, it doesn't matter whether you're a chef or an airline pilot or a missionary in one of the 70-plus countries Word of Life is in. Just going to another country and being a Word of Life missionary doesn't mean anything unless you are doing and being what you're called to do. And you can do or be that anywhere. Okay, Romans 13, Paul says, Awake! You're in the darkness, the hour where darkness has ever been. Awake to righteousness. That's what we all need to do. You need to make it a habit that you say, Lord, every day I want to see you. Every day I want to submit to you. I want to go through life with the bold confidence knowing I am doing exactly what you want me to do. Uh, to overflow with the Spirit, the Scriptures say stop loving the world. That's what 1 John 2 says. Whoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We are to be controlled by the love of God. It makes us compassionate. It makes us resist sin. It makes us be what people think we look just like Jesus Christ. So Jesus appeals to them in Revelation 2 and 3. I just read it to you and tells us in, Revel or in Romans 13, 11, that if we put on Christ, we can resist sin. Now, four more pages over, the motivation is always in Jesus' story in Matthew 24 to be ready because the Lord's coming when you're not looking. Did you understand that's what kept the early church going? What do you think kept them from going to the games and watching all the nudity, going to the trade guild and having naked servant girls serving them alcohol? and neighbor? Why do you think they did that? They said, I don't want to be in that setting. If Jesus came, I don't want him to find me there. See? They actually believed all this. Have you ever been in a situation where it would have been very embarrassing if Jesus Christ would have walked in and said, hey, coming to get you. Time to go home. And you would have gone, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Lord. Uh, uh, you know, excuse the setting I'm in, what I'm doing. Um, no, I shouldn't be. See, yes, we all have. But Jesus said, Live every day with two dates, today and he's coming, like Martin Luther said. Watch out for the permeating evil of false doctrine. That's why we guard doctrine. Watch out for, I already quoted this, 1 Peter 5, 8, our adversary, the devil. And verses 4 through 6, remember that comfort Jesus gives to the Sardians? He says, if you overcome, I'm going to see that promise, that assurance he gave. And what's the right response to Christ's message? The response is, repent. No matter how many steps I take away from him, no matter how many days you've wasted and not memorized scripture, not prayed, not, I mean, this morning, you know why I got up at five? I mean, I've got to work on my verses. I have to review the verses that I've memorized and I have packet after packet. I have to pray through my prayer list. I have to study the scriptures before I do my work. See, you have to decide whether you're going to redeem your life for the glory of God or you're going to fill your shopping cart with junk and it's all going to burn up.